Hello and welcome to Dear Franny, the podcast of uncommon conversations about love. I'm your host, Francesca Hoagie. Hi, thank you so much for listening. You might already know if you're a listener of the podcast that each week for this season, for season three, which has been, gosh, well, it's already December now, which is wild. It's been a few months. I have been each week tackling a different topic related to your dating journey. I did take Thanksgiving week off here in the U.S. Sorry that I didn't give you any notice about that. My podcast editor was like, are you recording? And I said, oh, I was going to. But then I realized, well, that would mean that she has to edit on Thanksgiving. So let me not do that to her. So shout out to Bex Carlos, my amazing editor and producer. Here we are. We're back. All right. And so this topic is a really important one. And it's about becoming magnetic for the love that you want. And what do I mean by that? So most dating advice out there and most of the conventional wisdom that we receive about love is about looking for love, looking high, looking low, looking in all the wrong places, searching, hoping to find it. And it's all tied up in this idea that out there in the world, there is that perfect person for you. And it's your job to really devote yourself to finding that person. And that doesn't sound like necessarily a harmful idea, if you, just at first blush. And we're also used to that thinking. But the problem with that idea is that it puts love as something that is separate from you. It puts love as something that you have to go out and find and maybe you won't find it because not everyone finds the things that they're searching for out in the world. But the thing about love, the truth about love, is that you are love and that all of the love that you will ever experience or have ever experienced in this world, that is all inside of you. That's something that you constantly have access to. I'm not saying that it's always easy to feel that way. And that's why I'm doing a podcast episode about this. That's why I do all of these episodes, right? That's why it's important to go deeper into understanding how love really works, to see that you actually get to attract love to you all of the time, and that it's not a matter of searching and searching, but it's a matter of opening yourself up to receive the love that is already available to you within yourself and from other people, okay? So that is the true goal is to open yourself up to receive it. So when I talk about becoming a magnet for love, it's really about giving yourself, number one, permission to show up in the world as your authentic self. So many of us are walking around with these masks on, these kind of versions of ourselves that we think will be the most palatable, the most acceptable, the most lovable. And I'm not saying that the point is that you walk down the street every day, you know, in your pajamas and you don't ever do your hair and you just like say whatever you think and you don't ever use a filter or consider other people's feelings. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about All of those times where you are putting on a smile when you don't feel a smile, every time you are so in your head about what somebody is thinking about you or how they might be judging you that you're not being present in the moment or you're not actually speaking your mind or sharing your emotions, right? It's very easy to go through life with this filter where it's like you but you are almost behind this barricade and you're just like poking out these pieces of yourself that you think people will accept and love. And the truth is that when it comes to romantic love, when it comes to relationships, I mean, when it comes to all love, but we always love people because we see their uniqueness. We love people. We fall in love with people because they're unlike anyone we've ever met before, right? No one ever fell in love with anyone saying, you know what? Oh, he's amazing. He's like everyone I've ever met before. He's just like your ordinary guy, standard guy, says what other guys say, talks like them, thinks like them, dresses like them. He's just, he's like everyone, (laughs) right? Obviously, no one ever said that. We only fall in love with people because we see their uniqueness, their authenticity, and that is the beauty in all of us, right, is who we truly are. So the first part of becoming a magnet for love is to, number one, the real number one is to accept that you are love, right, and you have access to all of the love that you want to experience. You have access to that right now. Doesn't mean that you don't go out and amplify it in relationship with other people because we're here obviously to be in relationship with other people. But it's not that the love is coming from outside of someone else and now you feel it. It's that the love inside of you is being activated and amplified by your connection with another person. Okay. So love is you. You are love. So that's the number one thing. Number two 
Are you willing to give yourself the permission and to have the courage to show up in the world in a way that is authentic to you? When it comes to dating, I mean, if I had a nickel for every time somebody said to me, well, you know, women like this or men like that. Or so, you know, you've got to do this because that's what people like. Or, you know, you've got to say that kind of thing because then they won't think that you're too serious or all of these assumptions, all of these projections, all of these masks, all of these ways to conform yourself to how you think you're going to be loved rather than being your true self. Okay. So if you are not showing up as your true self, The people who are right for you, the people who will love you and want to be with you will not be able to recognize you as their partner, okay? And you won't be able to recognize them either, by the way. That connection will be interrupted by these masks. You know, I always talk about self-compassion because it is critical to not judge yourself for any of these challenges that you have in terms of feeling separate from love, in terms of having that challenge to show up with that authenticity. It is not your fault and it's nothing that makes you bad or wrong or unworthy, okay? You are worthy of love, full stop. You are worthy because you are. You are worthy because you are here and you are alive and that is your birthright. So it's nothing about that, but we can get into that judgment, into that criticism, into that shame. And that is why self-compassion is so important, because if you're judging yourself, if you're criticizing yourself, then you're generating more shame and more shame creates what I call the shame fog. And once you're in the shame fog, you cannot see clearly and you stay stuck right where you are. Okay, so the self-compassion piece is really, really important here. So when you're thinking about, okay, am I showing up with authenticity? You're not beating yourself up about it. You're looking for opportunities to be a little bit more brave, to be a little bit more yourself, to take a little bit more of a risk and showing up in a way that other people might say, oh, wow, she's different or they're different, right? It's all about just those baby steps because the more you open yourself up and step into that authenticity, the more you're able to get the confidence, be like, oh, wait, people are responding. Oh, wait, I'm actually connecting with people more, right? I'm actually seeing the authenticity in other people because when I show up as my authentic self, I give other people permission to do the same. And then we're actually able to connect on a deeper level. So that authenticity piece is huge, huge, huge. And all of this needs to be paired with self-compassion. If it's going to be productive, your actions, your energy is going to result in getting the love that you want. So on that topic of getting the love that you want, how do you want to be loved? How do you want to be seen, to be heard, to be accepted? What parts of yourself do you want, even though it's scary, you desperately want that acceptance, that understanding of? Because by identifying those parts of yourself without the judgment, then you can start to show a little bit more and more and more and more and more of those parts of yourself. Maybe it's your creativity or your sensitivity or your ingenuity or your tenacity or your generosity. What are those parts of yourself that you really want to be seen? And maybe you don't feel that they generally are seen and be not in romantic relationships. So how can you start to show up a little bit more? How do you want to be loved, right? You have probably, if you've listened to this podcast for a while, heard me talk about relationship needs and how important it is to get clear on what your needs are in a relationship. So not just what you want in a partner, but what do you need in a relationship, right? Like, do you need intellectual stimulation? I need intellectual stimulation. Do you need shared adventure and travel? And is that something that's really foundational to you? Do you need a sense of family and prioritizing the family and really giving your energy and your intention to building a family together? Like all of these things that It's easy to kind of overlook because you're focused on the other person, but it's like, no, no, what about the relationship? Like, what are the core values of our relationship? And so once you get clear on what those relationship needs are, then you have a much clearer blueprint for you to make sure in dating that you're showing up and you are embodying those characteristics and those qualities. Really easy in dating to project, right? And so to project onto the other person and, okay, I want them to be this, I want them to be that. And it's like when you're doing that and you're projecting what you want, then you're not actually giving that person the opportunity to show up as who they are and for you to see them as who they are, right? And you're also, if you're projecting onto other people, that also is a way of quote unquote defending and protecting yourself from really being seen because you're making it all about the other person. That projection 
is a barrier to love, right? And it's not a barrier because it's going to stop you from going out and looking for it, but it's a barrier because it's going to stop you from being able to receive it. And remember, that is what we are talking about here. And when you start to release that tendency to project and to start to really see and accept people for who they are, even when that might mean, oh, wow, I was interested in dating this person, but I see now this person is not for me. And that's a bummer because I wanted them to be right. And that can be disappointing. But if you are unwilling to accept that reality, you're only prolonging a situation that doesn't serve you. And you're only keeping the love that you want at bay. Okay, you're only keeping that love at bay. So when you are kind enough to yourself and you start to take that really high self-worth action of accepting other people for who they are and where they are without making it about you, right, and without projecting and making them wrong or whatever, then you can just release the attachment to the person who isn't for you. And that allows you to open up more to receive the love from the people who are because there's more than one person for everyone, by the way. That projection is something to really pay attention to. And another way to kind of, if you're like, oh, I don't know if I project so much onto other people, think about this also. How much are you expecting perfection in other people? And when I say perfection, I don't mean that you literally think that they're an absolutely perfect human because presumably you know there is no such thing. But how much are you looking for something to say, oh, I don't like that thing that they said, or oh, they think that's funny, or whoa, the shoes that they're wearing, oh, or they, oh, they like that song. How much are you looking at those things that they're not about their character, right? There's not about their values, but it's about these sort of nitpicky things that we can fixate on in dating. And it starts to turn into this judgment of like, oh, well, why did he wear that? Or, you know, oh, God. Why did she say that? Or, you know, all of that sort of thing that comes up. If you find yourself regularly in dating, falling into that sort of critical mindset, I really want you to just, again, with that compassionate curiosity, right, that self-compassion, just start to check yourself and be like, okay, hold on a second. Do the shoes matter? They probably don't really matter. Let me focus on what's really important here. And it's not to say that every person is going to be right for you because that's never the case, but you won't actually know that if you're getting stuck on something that doesn't matter. Getting distracted and stuck on things that don't matter in dating is keeping many, many, many people single, okay? Because again, when you get distracted and you get stuck on things that don't matter, then you are now closing yourself off to receiving love from people who are actually available to give it to you because you're not open to that. So this can be really sneaky. But what I really want you to come back to my first point here is that I want you to start to challenge yourself to think of how you can start to embody the love inside of you, the loving being that you are. How can you start to embody that more and more and let that light and that beauty and that love shine through for yourself, for your friends, for your family, for your pet? (laughs) right? For your neighbor, how can you start to embody that loving energy more and more? Because once you embody that loving energy, the love that you want, it becomes inevitable. It can't be stopped. It cannot be stopped when you open yourself up to receive it, when you truly open yourself up to receive love, right? Not attachment, not to get stuck on a bunch of things that don't matter or try to find some quote unquote perfect person who checks every box on the list of the dream characteristics. But when you open yourself up to see another person, to be seen by another person, to be accepted, to be nurtured, to have emotional safety as well as physical safety, to have emotional intimacy, as well as emotional intimacy, to have commitment and to have joy within you that is amplified by the other person and by your connection to each other, that is available to you. I promise it is available to us all. That is the beauty. The universe does not discriminate in terms of its laws, right? So we're all born as loving creatures, (laughs) loving human beings. And that's just a fact. And that is that love is available to us just like the sun is available to us all. Right. And so this is about taking away those 
accidental like umbrellas and shades and barriers to receiving that sunshine in the name of, well, this is how you date or this is how it goes or, you know, I have to go out and search. No, no, no. You can attract the love that you want. And I'm so excited, even if you take just a little bit of encouragement from this episode and starting to think of, hmm, how can I embody love more? How can I be more loving towards myself, right? That is so, so huge because the more loving you're able to be towards yourself, the easier it is for you to open yourself up to receive love from other people because you now believe that you deserve it and you're in the habit of receiving it. A really quick check on this is, for instance, how well do you take a compliment when someone gives you a compliment? And and you might be comfortable about compliments in some areas, like maybe you're comfortable with a compliment about your work product, or you're comfortable with a compliment about the, your home decor or something like that. Because it's sort of like, oh, yeah, that's something that I did, right? That's a skill that I have versus when somebody really looks at you and sees you and gives you a compliment about you. How does that feel? And if you find yourself when people give you compliments, if you find yourself shutting down or deflecting or making that person wrong or just saying, oh, no, 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 not that I don't look good. Like, oh, my God, I'm so tired. No, if you find yourself doing that, that is a really good indication that your ability to give yourself the loving action of self-validation, right, of giving yourself compliments and seeing yourself as beautiful and worthy and creative and kind and all of those things. If you're unable to do that for yourself, then it's going to be really hard for you to receive that from someone else. So even in a very small context of somebody giving you a compliment, if that makes you uncomfortable and you resist it and you push it away, then how do you think that you're actually energetically able to receive love and someone truly seeing you for who you are? And we tell ourselves, oh, well, when I meet the right person, then I'll be open to that. Then I'll want that. And the reality is that, no, it doesn't work that way. So how we are is how we are, right? And so if someone telling you that you look good today makes you shut down and say, no, 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 and tell them all the ways they're wrong, then it's going to be really hard for you. It's going to be really hard for you to actually let yourself be seen and loved by another person. The antidote, the way to start to heal this is to practice that self-validation, right? Give yourself credit. Start to think of how you can release some of that judgment and that criticism that you have towards yourself with that self-compassion. Those are all acts of self-love. So when you start to take those loving actions towards yourself, your feelings eventually start to catch up. But that is a responsibility that you have to choose to love yourself first. So when people say that you can't love another person unless you love yourself first, I don't agree with that. I think that loving other people is, is easy for us. But receiving love from other people, that is what we cannot do or would be very difficult for us to do with any consistency when we don't give ourselves that love. So it all comes back to self-love. It all comes back to knowing that you're worthy, treating yourself with that compassion so you can get to that place of actually believing that you're worthy. Because if you're beating yourself up and criticizing yourself and judging yourself, the self-worth piece, it's not going to fall into place. And then you validate yourself by giving yourself that credit, right? All the things that you've done, all of the miraculous characteristics and qualities that only you have, the more you can celebrate those things within yourself. This is not a, an overly egoic thing. This is confidence. This is love. And this is what I want you to think of. How can I embody more of this? And how might that change my energy, my vibe, my whole experience of being in the world? And, and especially your experience in dating. So I know that you have it within you to be the magnet for the love that you want because that's who you are. That's how you were born. You were born magnetic for love, magnetic for abundance, right? Things happen. Life isn't always fair. No one has a perfect experience in life. So there are lots of reasons why we can get disconnected from that. However, we can return to it. And that is my invitation to you right now is to return to that wholeness, to that truth that you are born as a loving, loving being who is full of love, who is magnetic for love, who is deserving of love. And I'm really excited for you to embody that more and more and more and see how much you really do become a magnet for the love that you want. I hope this has been helpful. And if it has been helpful, I invite you to share this episode with a friend, share it on social media. 
I am on all social media at Dear Franny, on the Instagram, on the Twitter, on the Clubhouse. I also invite you, if you are not already part of my Clubhouse community, to please join us on Clubhouse in the True Love Society. It is totally free. All are welcome who don't want to settle in life or in love. And we have amazing conversations there every week, including on Tuesdays for True Love Tuesday. We have a conversation that is the same topic as this episode. So you can come talk to us live on Clubhouse on Tuesday and then listen to this episode when it drops later in the week. So it's beautiful synergy and I invite you to join us. Again, I want to thank you so much for listening. I want to thank everyone who's taken the time to rate the podcast and to write a review. I see you. I appreciate you. I also found out yesterday that my podcast is in the top 5% of podcasts in the world, which is amazing. And that is thanks to you. So I thank you so very much. And I definitely, definitely hope that is really helping you to know that you are worthy of love and knowing that the love that you want is 100% available to you. And I just want to do everything that I can to support you in getting there and to having that loving relationship. So thank you so much for listening. Last thing before I go is I also... I also want to remind those of you who are single women who are listening to consider joining my membership community. And you can go to thetruelovesociety.com to learn more about that. But inside of that membership community, you get live Zooms with me every month. There's a Q&A. There's a masterclass every month. You also get community of incredible women who are on the same dating journey as you are. And everyone supports each other. It's such a beautiful place. And I would invite you to check that out. Membership is $25 a month. You can cancel at any time. And you also have access to all of the library of all of our past events because they're all recorded and they're there for you. So for that $25 a month, you get a lot. <laughs> you get a lot of content, you get a lot of resources, and you get to talk to me directly for some live coaching and our two monthly Zoom meetings. So definitely encourage you to check that out for that support on your dating journey. And again, thank you all so much for listening. Have a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. And until next time, goodbye.